Dear friends of Ortolino, my name is Dieter Manschura and I'm the owner and manager of Ortolino Company. Today I want to speak about Shinhanga. Shinhanga was a Japanese art movement in printmaking, well that set in around 1910. Shin means new and Hanga is the Japanese word for print. So uh, it means new prints. But what was so new about Shin Hanga? To answer the question, let's go back into the 19th century. In the 19th century, Japanese printmaking, it's called ukiyo-e, was a kind of a mass um, media. It was used for advertising, it even had a functional, a bit like a, a newspaper. However, towards the end of the 19th century, uh, with the beginning of the westernization and industrialization of Japan, uh, this old tradition uh, became obsolete and was threatened to disappear. It was replaced uh, by offset techniques, by photography, by lithography. And in 1910, well, then came one man, uh, and he was very decisive for, for Shinhanga. His name was Watanabe Shotsaburo, and he was not an artist, he was a publisher. And Watanabe Shotsaburo had a vision. He had a vision about renewing the old tradition of Okioe. And he had very precise ideas how to do it. He kept the old basic concept, uh, which was especially the creation of woodblock prints in a teamwork, in a teamwork of, of four different skills. Well, there was the, the artist, the carver who carved the, the blocks, the printer who pulled the impression, and last but not least was the number four, the publisher who was responsible for the successful uh, launch into the market and, and the commercial side and who kept it all together. Well, that was kept, um, but Shin Hanga added uh, some Western modern features into this old tradition. One uh, new feature was the showing the effects of light and shadow something that the Japanese artists had learned from the French Impressionists. And the other one was the introduction of perspective. Uh, old Japanese prints from the early 19th century did not know any perspective or any shadows. Watanabe was a rather, a rather smart guy and businessman and he had precise ideas how to target his market. And his market uh, was not in Japan. Uh, he had targeted the export business. Actually, most of the Shinhanga prints went to the United States and to Europe. And Watanabe wanted to give them a romantic view of Japan, uh, an image of Japan that did not exist anymore at, at that time. I give you here, I get two examples. Let's start with that one. Uh, a woodblock print by Shotei Hiroaki Takahashi. Uh, you can see a, a geisha in kimono with a basket on, on her back and old-fashioned wooden sandals on her feet. Um, beautiful, <laughs> but it wasn't the Japan of the beginning of the 20th century. The same here, farmer coming home from his work. Uh, here the red of the sunlight pagoda in the background. What another was very successful with this concept. But it was of course interrupted by World War um, II and the whole movement um, well, was kind of finished when he died in 1962. By that time also most of the artists had either retired or, or died. Let me conclude uh, with a recommendable book, Shinhanga New Prints. 
in modern Japan, it's not expensive. Well, it has some good explanations, some nice illustrations. Let's take a color, color illustrations. Where are you? Okay, yeah, here we have a beautiful one. A beautiful one. A detail from a very famous woodblock print. Okay, let me conclude by mentioning our weekly online auctions in Japanese prints where you can acquire one of these beautiful pieces. Uh, these auctions start on Wednesday at 8 p.m. our local time here in beautiful Bavaria, uh, which is 2 p.m. in New York. I would be pleased to see you then and goodbye and thank you for watching.